All right, we just finished our lesson on the JavaScript data type string. Let's open up the Google Chrome Developer Console. We'll go over this quickly one more time, and in future videos, if you don't remember, you can come back and reference these earlier videos. Go ahead and hit the hamburger icon in the upper right hand corner. Hover down to More Tools, then Developer Tools. The shorthand on Mac is Command Option J, and on Windows, it's Control Shift J. Let's go ahead and practice that quickly to close and open our console. Make sure to go to the address bar and type in about.blank and you're all set. Now, remember, if your console starts to get filled up, you can simply clear it out by writing clear, then two parentheses. And if you ever want to recover something that you've entered, you can simply press the up arrow to recover it. Alright, let's get back to reviewing strings. We learned that strings are used to represent text. We saw how to turn any primitive data type into a string by adding single or double quotes around the characters. We then saw how to use the escape backslash to handle special characters within our JavaScript string. Finally, we had a couple looks at the length property and the two uppercase method. We'll start off and look at a few lines of code that we want to be a string, but need some help. We have var animal equals the string horse with an opening single quote and a closing double quote. We also have var answer equals false with no quotes. Go ahead and pause the video and let's see if you can come up with a solution to turn these into valid strings. Alright, that shouldn't have been too tough. Our first line of code was airing out because we have mixed single and double quotes in an attempt to assign a string to the variable horse. The solution is simply to make the quotes match. Our second line of code needs to be wrapped in quotes to change our value from a boolean of false to a string of false. Alright, let's move on to our next challenge. When we are writing strings which represent text, it is normal to use apostrophes and quotes within those strings. However, this presents a problem for the JavaScript interpreter, as we discussed in our lesson. Let's look at two examples of single and double quotes within strings. Our first example, we have var greeting one, assigned a value of double quotes around Sam says hi, with hi also in double quotes. In our second example, we have var greeting two, assigned a value of single quotes surrounding the phrase, it's great to see you with an apostrophe in the word it's. Go ahead and pause the video. Rewrite these lines of code in a way that the JavaScript interpreter can understand and use them as strings. For now, don't use the escape character. After that, we'll go ahead and work on a solution together. Alright, how'd it go? Hopefully that wasn't too challenging. In the first case of greeting one, we simply needed to change the outside quotes to the single quotes. In the second case of greeting two, we just needed to change the outside quotes to double quotes. Now, let's get started using the escape character within strings. Let's look at another string. We have var greeting three, assigned a value wrapped in single quotes with one single quote within it. Here is your challenge. Like the earlier examples, we have a quote conflict. Instead of changing single or double quotes, please use the escape character to fix the conflict. Also, this one is a really long line taking up the width of the page. Use the escape character and the letter N two times in the sentence to shorten the width of the space taken up. Go ahead and pause this video and give it a shot, then we'll find a solution together. Alright, this one was a bit trickier. Let's go ahead and fix that long, faulty string. We're going to go in and put the escape character before the single quote in don't, and then to shorten the length, we're going to put the escape character in the letter N after newspaper and the word B. And the result is exactly what we were looking for. Let's go ahead and close out our challenges with the length property and the two uppercase method. Let's stick with our greeting three variable, because we've worked so hard on it. For this challenge, I want you to find the length of greeting 3 and turn the whole sentence into uppercase. Go ahead and give it a shot and we'll find a solution together. 
Alright, I hope that went well. To find the length of greeting 3, we're simply going to add a dot length at the end of it. Remember, this isn't a method, so we aren't going to invoke it with parentheses. Lastly, let's turn this into a shout by attaching the two uppercase method to greeting 3. And there you have it. Thanks for joining us in the lab and taking a first look at strings. We'll see you in the next lesson.